Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today we're going to be going over the exam guide for the Salesforce Certified Associate exam. Um, I did take this about a month ago and did pass on the first try and I would love to give you a few pointers here in this video. Uh, one thing I do want to plug my course. I did create a course for this exam about a week after I passed it. So all the information was fresh and um, yeah, it was a really awesome project to work on. My husband and I, we created it. He did a glossary of all the terms that you'll need to know, as well as a practice exam that very much reflects the actual exam. People say it's a smidgen harder than the actual exam. So you know, uh, if you pass the practice that it's very, very likely that you'll pass the, the regular exam. Um, I'll leave that down in the description. It's over on salesforceupskill.com. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. So this was released, I believe, around September 12th. And it is essentially meant to bridge the gap between a new um, a user of Salesforce and an admin. So specifically, if you are wanting to go on the admin path and you just want to show that you have a super user's worth of knowledge, then this exam and this certification is for you. Um, a few things about this exam, it has 40 multiple choice, multiple select questions. So what does that mean? So in my experience on the exam, it was 40 questions and then you selected one out of three and all of those were that way. So each question, you read the question and then you would select one answer out of three. Um, and then you have the time to a lot or the time allotted to complete the exam is around 70 minutes. So that is a little less than two minutes per question, which that is more than enough from what I thought was for the exam. Passing score is 62% and the registration fee is $75. And then the retake fee is free. So this is a lot cheaper than most other Salesforce exams. Um, it's a lot shorter. The passing score is a lot lower. Um, the number of questions are lower as well. There are no um, prerequisites for this. You cannot have any references while you take this exam. And you can do this in person at a testing center or you can take it online personally. I like taking mine online. All right, so then we have the recommended training and references, which is just the um, trail mixes in the module. I personally, if you have background knowledge of Salesforce, then I think that this is helpful, the trail mix. However, not everything that was on the exam shows up on the trail mix. There's some stuff that was not covered there. All right, so then we get to the exam outline. So this is what's going to be on the actual exam or what the topics that will be covered on the exam. So a lot of this was around customers 360 and now that's a lot of um, fancy terms, <laughs> but it's not that fancy. It's just all of the separate products and a brief overview of what they, um, what they are. So essentially what that means is like commerce cloud or health cloud or a nonprofit cloud. Like what do these specific clouds help with? So um, fundraising and taking donors and creating donor events, that's going to be in the nonprofit cloud. Uh, talking about health security of uh, medical information, that's going to be the health cloud. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the exam outline. Salesforce ecosystem at 32% of the weight. Um, then you're going to talk about the different um, resources and uh, available to learn and apply in demand skills. So this is going to be Trailhead. This is going to be Trailhead Academy. This is going to be uh, Salesforce help blogs and just essentially knowing what those are. Then we talked about customer 360, um, which product offerings would could be used and then describe how companies use Salesforce, essentially what product is gonna be good for the company in each scenario. And then you'll differentiate between the various job roles and career paths within Salesforce. So salesperson versus service person versus admin versus developer versus configurator. What do all these things mean? And that is essentially Salesforce ecosystem. Then we move on to navigation. So navigation is just essentially how to get around and do uh, certain things within Salesforce. So how to change personal settings mostly for yourself. This could be language settings. This could be locale settings. This could be um, navigation bar that you see at the top of your Salesforce org. You can customize that and how to do that. And then 
so essentially it's how can a customer locate and access the necessary information. So that's going to be through personal settings um, and then identify where customization takes place. Again, personal settings, or you might find this in the quick find, you might find this in setup or um, in the navigation bar. This is really just how do you get around Salesforce? So if you are able to go in and um, mess around within Salesforce, it'd be really helpful. Also list views here could be a really good thing to learn. And then we have data model at 25%. So what this means is essentially how do the core objects work? What kind of information is stored there? Um, what are the relationships between all these things? And then also within the data model, you'll also see some security things. So who can see what things within their security? Um, it's not too heavy on the intricacies of like, well, if this person has one profile and 15 permission sets, then what can they see? It's not going to be like that. You might get one question on um, how do you open up more access to one small group of users? Yeah, that's kind of the data model. It also encaps encapsulates um, some security things. Then we have reports and dashboards at 15%. This is going to be talking about some of the features that you can find in dashboards and reporting. Things like how to summarize and maybe what a matrix report is, um, when to use a certain component within a dashboard, what a running user on a dashboard is like, how to subscribe to a dashboard and a report. Um, yeah, things like that. All in all, um, when we've seen people take our course, if they've gone through the majority of it, they've been able to pass. So uh, if you take time to study, you should be able to take this one and pass. And again, what's the harm in taking it if the retake fee is free? Then this just covers the code of conduct. Don't give anyone any answers. Um, you can review the, the guidelines. Yeah. Oh, and there is no maintenance for this Salesforce certification. Once you get it, then it should be it should be clear for you to get it unless they update it in summer 2023. That is a walkthrough of the exam guide for the Salesforce Associate Certification. I hope that you found this helpful. Um, if you like this type of content, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe if you're feeling generous. If you have any questions, be sure to comment them down below and check out our courses over on Salesforce Upskill. We're really happy to have launched this recently uh, to help more professionals like you get certified. So thanks so much and I'll catch you guys in the next one.